So it's after 5.30, so I think we'll go ahead and open the uh, hearing of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, my name is David Bloomberg. I'm here with Maureen Scal uh, Scanlon, Elizabeth Silver, Sarah Northrup, Bob Riddle, and well, Carolyn Mish from the Office of Planning and Sustainability, providing mm -hmm. staff support. Uh, I guess the three voting members will be the full members, so uh, Sarah, Elizabeth, and myself. Um, we have two items on the agenda. Um, and notice of this hearing was published on August 30th and September 6th. Um, before we hear the first application, I'll just ask, we have uh, an opportunity for public comment. Uh, if there's anyone here from the public who would like to comment to the board about anything other than the two applications before the board tonight, seeing none, we'll move on. Um, in each case, for each application, I'll ask that the applicant or its representative uh, present a brief description of the application. The board will have a chance to ask questions from board members, and, um, and then the public will have the chance to also ask questions about the application or comment. I would ask that all comments and questions be directed to the board, not to each other, and I would ask that everybody who speaks uh, come up to the podium and identify yourself by name and address for the record. Um, I think that's it, right? So, so the anything else? The first uh, uh, matter before us is the request for a commercial finding amendment by New England Pat's Franchise Investment Partners, Inc. to expand a non-conforming use to add a restaurant at 55 Damon Road, tax parcel ID is 18D-26. And I, I, I'll go ahead and ask the uh, representative. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Go ahead, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rich Seifeck, and I'm an attorney from Springfield. And I represent the uh, the applicant tonight, um, uh, New England Pass Franchise Investment Partner, Inc. is the applicant. The owner of the building is uh, American Dream Realty, LLC, uh, Mr. Manny Sardina, who's with us this evening. Mr. Tom Ebon, who is a representative from New England Pass Franchise Investment Partners, um, is uh, looking to open up a business known as Hothead Burritos. Um, What's coincidental about this, this evening's uh, presentation is that one year ago tomorrow, September 14th of a year ago, we gave you the exact same presentation. This is the Damon Road project, the 55 Damon Road, the old car dealership. And I just handed you just a little, just to re-familiarize yourself with, the, uh, with the, the layout on the little packet illustration, which is a proposed commercial development packet. Um, if you just go to page C3, that was the old building. You can stop me whenever you get familiar with what we talked about a year ago. So, the C3 is right here. So, you're referring to the new packet you gave us? Yes, yes. So, just to re familiarize yourself with, uh -huh. with the site, it's 55 Damon Road, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the site in and of itself. But that was the old building. Then, if you flip a page to C4, that is the new uh, proposed development that's going on right now. Um, everything was uh, uh, allowed a year ago, tomorrow. This board and the planning board approved the special permit and you made a finding to allow for the Dunkin' Donuts to go in and that's going to be a freestanding building. If you look at the illustration on C4, you'll see the freestanding proposed Dunkin' Donuts building to the right. And then if you look to the left, you'll see what remains of the old building. And that was the proposed um, 6,200 square foot um, commercial building. And that's why we're here tonight. And if you flip ahead, a little bit further to A1.1, about three more pages ahead. That's the layout of the three retail spaces that were approved for the freestanding building. Uh, I don't see the A. It's it's a, it's a it's one. It's in the back, yeah, yeah, just a little floor plan. It's A3.1? It's, oh, yeah, it's, oh, it's a it is, separate it's a space. space. Yes. Separate, separate yeah, and I, and I handed you a separate one, which is a separate document in there. That's actually the build out of the space we're talking about. And this, are you also going to planning board on this? No, we don't have to. Oh, you don't have to. No, okay. it's already been approved. All we're really doing is seeking to amend your finding, which allowed the retail space, but it was supposed to be for office space in general. And we have one um, retail space already. Um, under lease, and then in the course, Mr. Uh, Ted Cassell has been the uh, commercial broker involved. He's been looking for tents, and over the course of the past year, 
one of the tenants that's taken the biggest space, if you look at A1A, the tenant number one space, 3,200 square feet, is going to be known, a, a company known as the marketing doctor. So they're, they're a tenant in that space. And then if you look to space number three, which is um, uh, 1,800 square feet, that is the space that we're here to talk about this evening. And that's the space that New England Pats Franchise Investment Partners Inc. would like to open up a small business known as Hothead Burritos. Is that um, on A1.1? Yes. Is that at the lower left corner? Correct. And is that facing, is the, the the front door is that facing Damon Road? Correct. North. Perfect. You got it. What about those unidentified spaces up in this one plan, A11? Are those connected to these spaces? Are they part of them? It's all the same building, yet they're going to be divided by walls, obviously. But tenant space number one will be the marketing doctor. Yes. Tenant space two is unoccupied right now. We don't have anybody. I guess I'm asking about the, there was. The south side. It looks of like on this the plan there are six spaces, but there are really only three. Spaces. Only three. Yeah. Okay, right. It. Yeah. This. I know what you're saying. Yeah. There's a middle yeah. wall there, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's this vertical. That that's double shaded line. It's a carrying wall. It. So yeah, it's a carrying wall. Okay. okay. But this, but the Shining. tennis space goes from front to back. Front to back. Front to back. Right. Correct. The whole. Correct. The and and one of the the individual handouts that I gave was just the layout of the interior space. How hothead burritos intends on setting up the interior space of that space number three. Thanks. Looking at A3.1, am I seeing a drive-up window? Uh, there's a drive-up window for the Dunkin' Donuts. There's not a drive-up for this commercial building. Oh, okay. And that was approved a year ago? Yeah, everything, yeah, there's no, there's no changes to everything that was approved. The only reason that we're here this evening is the use. Everything that was approved is identical as being constructed as we speak. So there's no change at all to the plans as approved by this board and by the planning board. Nothing. It was all about just finding the tenants. And after a year's search, we've got two tenants. Um, the marketing doctor and hothead burritos. And hothead burritos just needed an additional finding from this board. That's really the sole reason that we're here this time. And we already, a year ago, approved a restaurant in the form of Dunkin' Donuts, which okay. will be there in the second building. Absolutely. So the only issue before us is whether the approval of the expansion of the restaurant use beyond Dunkin' Donuts to allow hot and burritos. burritos is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood Correct. than the existing condition. Correct. And this was in a this is a GI zone where restaurant use is not allowed. Correct. It's industrial. industrial, but I understand this site has never ever been used for industrial. Never. Car dealership. Sure. And are there other restaurants along Damon Road or not? Sure. I don't sure. know. Oh the way up near Route 9. That's not in, yeah. That's not GI. It's not GI. It's drive through um, okay. at the back side. Sure. 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 Can, can I ask uh, can I ask Carolyn as just background? Mm -hmm. There were lots of, and you provided us with that paperwork, there were lots of conditions with the Dunkin' Donuts application mm -hmm. that the Planning Commission mm -hmm. um, requested. Yeah. We're going to assume that those are still in place and those will be the ones Those that will have to be implemented. And so the only change is within the building footprint that you and the Planning Board already approved. Um, allocating one of the tenant spaces from office or an allowed use in general industrial to this burrito restaurant. So whatever traffic changes were recommended by the planning commission for that first of the donuts use are uh, uh, um, what we would assume are fine for this or be or this would be going before the planning commission. It's not going back to the planning board. Um, the your review would be sort of that's why they submitted the, the information about the traffic and the um, different hours of operation was to compare that to what was already approved relative to traffic. So um, because there's not um, an expansion of footprint, it wouldn't trigger going back to the planning code. So as I recall, when we were looking at this originally, 
if you were coming, what's the direction from Bridge, uh, from Route 9 yeah. to King, what's that direction? That's uh, north. North, okay. North. okay. If you're coming north. northwest. northwest. You're coming north. There's going to be no left turn in there, right? Right. Correct. Right. Right. They have to go down to the lights, right. take a left, and go into the smaller curb cut from industrial from drive. industrial drive. Right. 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 Coming out of there, which is there, there's a pocket, right, to take that left turn? No, there's no pocket. There's no. two lanes. There's an arrow, but there's no pocket, right? There's no. It's right in, right out only. No, 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 no. To take the left onto Industrial Drive from Damon Road. Oh, there is a turn pocket at the signal. Yes. At the signal. There's two lanes. There's not an additional pocket, right? The there's a I, there's a left turn pocket on Damon Road to turn left onto Industrial Drive. At the signal. In addition to the two lanes that are already there, there's no. only one lane. No, there's two point. lanes. It changes to two lanes after the light. Right? Yeah, it's only one lane going into the light in that direction. And then it. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm coming from Route 9 towards King. Before the railroad tracks, before the light, there's two lanes. No, no, no. There are. So, yeah, after you go through the light at <coughs> Industrial Drive. No, no. Before you hit the light, as you're lining up at the light, there are two lanes. Yeah, that's the turn pocket. Okay, so the left lane of those two lanes could either go straight or left. You're still looking at 10 minutes left, going at 90 minutes left. No, and are you going no, at 24 minutes left? No, it is not. I think, right. I don't know. Okay. So it's not like that. Okay. I have been there four. almost daily. Mm -hmm. I, I know that this is, you can either go straight or left. Sorry which, about that. No, 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 it's fine. But no, I mean, it's in there. But yes, there's that. But my where I'm going, yeah, no pun intended here, is if I if I were to go straight, then there's that mishmash of all those different lanes to you know to sort of sort yourself out as you're right. by the Pride Station. Yeah, after you go over the track. Yeah. Yes, but if you you are allowed to be in the left lane to go straight, and it probably works better to go straight to be in the left lane. So if we're adding more left turn more people turning left into that, which we are doing. I understand what your argument is about the 12 to 2, excuse me, 5 to 7. Mm -hmm. But we are adding traffic that will be taking a left in rush hour when it's the busiest, clogging that left turn if people are going in there. So uh, unless there's a way to build yet a, a different dedicated pocket, that's going to increase the backup all the way back up to the bridge on Damon Road. With a caveat, which is Aiden Road is going to be totally reconstructed and redesigned. How many lanes will it have? I well, I have to pull up the design plans, but we're at 100% design. They've incorporated all the traffic data for coming projects. They know about this project. This project knows about the Damon Road reconstruction. It's not going to. The number of trips won't affect the throughput on Damon Road. Um, I can pull up the design plan space in a couple minutes, but um, do we know about when that would happen? It's on the tip. It's already scheduled. That we're at 100 percent design, so it's in a couple of years, so to say. Okay, but you're talking about doing this now. You're yes, getting it's already built now. Yep. Well, but they're still. I mean, if you've been by the site, they're under construction. Right. It's going to be a while before they'll be a good yeah, eight months before Next the year. site's finished. So, but there'll still be a gap of it over a year, at least, from what you're saying in that. Yeah. Okay. So then, I'm just recapping from a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then, coming out of there, you don't have to go out, if you're heading up towards Route 9, you don't have to go out industrial. There will be a forced right turn onto Damon, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. From there? Okay. All right. So, all right. So. All right, thank you. I, I, I am interested in what Dana's is going to look like because be I, I think I think the concern for me is in that uptick of traffic um, in in a location that that already is you know overclogged. If there's a redundancy in there, I apologize. But because um, that's the plan you're going to. Well, I've seen, I saw that, okay. but um, so I, I know, I just, I think 
what's going to happen with Damon? That I can't decipher on this. Right. I can't decipher what's going to happen on Damon Road. Right now. Can you? Here's industrial. Here's Damon. Right. Here's industrial. There's Damon. I, I don't know how many lanes there'll be. I don't know how long it will be. Oh yeah, I don't future Damon Road. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. I appreciate all those big questions, and I'm not sure this is like the best time to raise them, but I do think we're basing our thoughts about the future of that road, and the city is clearly really moving on changing some things about how that road works, and including thoughts about you know, zoning, because obviously it's not been, they've, nothing's been industrial on that site. So it would be great if we were not having to deal with these issues appeal by appeal, where the city zoning was actually, you know, at a place that supported what these folks are asking us to put in there. Right. So the city is has talked about rezoning this parcel to general business, mm -hmm. in which case the use would be allowed by right. Um, and I think, frankly, the drive-through, Duncan Donuts drive-through generates probably more trips um, in and out of that intersection than um, a place, um, a smaller place that doesn't have a drive-through. Well, th that's probably true, but we're just piling on top of what's already there, so it's not concerning. The other retail space we don't know is, is, is the unknown crystal ball could generate more traffic on it on, on a, throughout the entire day. For example, IE, a law firm, um, we generate traffic all day long with the people coming in and out with closings and office appointments and so forth and so on, marketing doctors. So it's kind of like there's going to be new, new, every business that's going to open up there, three are going to be allowed, they're going to generate traffic. The question is, this I've had burritos going to generate substantially more detrimental than any other particular use that's already allowed. And my, my suggestion is it's not going to. Um, Mr. Yvonne is very experienced in the, I'll call it the fast food industry. He's got six other Subway stores. He's, he's just started these hothead burrito stores. This is like his third store, I believe. Um, and um, they're kind of a slow start. This is not a, uh, it's not a McDonald's. It's not even a Subway. He has Subway stores. Hothead burritos has a a kind of a short window of, of sandwich kind of dinner type of thing. Um, it doesn't anticipate generating a ton of traffic, to be honest with you. The traffic that's going to be there with the, is, is hopefully the traffic gonna, that's going to be off the site for Dunkin' Donuts, whatever, um, is the traffic that he hopes to grab that someone's going to send me a coffee and a sandwich type of thing, which a lot of these kind of marriages are happening now in a lot of the, the retail world where you get a sandwich and a coffee type of thing. So um, independent of what other use is going to be there, uh, he doesn't anticipate uh, drawing a, a huge increase in volume. And his peak hours are off. Dunkin' Donuts peak hours. He doesn't have a breakfast menu, so to speak. Dunkin' Donuts, as you know, is a big morning. They're they're twenty four seven, but they're got their morning rush hour. I've had burritos is looking at a lunch dinner type of thing. And then if he gets any business during the off peak hours, he's only going to have three employees during peak hours, only two in off peak hours. So that kind of indicates that they don't anticipate a large volume of business during the course of the day. So I kind of think it's, it's kind of a good good fit for that particular building in that particular location. And uh, I would highly recommend that you approve the, uh, the amendment. So the, I do, yeah, yeah. I do have the design plan that the lane striping will essentially stay, it'll be, there'll be two lanes going back to where the River Run intersection is and there'll be a new crosswalk there. There'll be two lanes all the way, and both of them, with the left lane, will be straight and left turn. The right lane will be straight and right turn um, direction, and then um, it will go into uh, maintain two lanes after that intersection, um, and then become a left turn or a straight at the King Street. Understanding the difference between that and what you just described and what it is now. I don't know. That I'm saying there's not going to be a difference in the lane striping at the signal in front of this. There'll be other changes that address uh, throughput throughout the entire length of Damon Road, but it's not going to. 
for this section, it will be the same as what's there. And they certainly have incorporated the proposed uses along here as well as, um, I mean, the real issue are the conflict points of, of turning movements. And so they're closing curb cuts up and down Damon Road where there are excess curb cuts, which is really what causes those conflicts as opposed to ones that signalized intersections. All right, so when you say closing the curb cuts, I'm assuming going back to that other little mall mm -hmm. in there, you're talking about closing, <coughs> but are you cutting off some or just closing them? So, I mean, people will still be able to turn left off of Damon into some that little mall. Some of them will mall. be closed completely because there are multiple ones. So every time you have a multiple curb cut, you have more offered, more, um, conflict points and that affects the flow on the network. Uh -huh. They'll be minimizing the widths and minimizing the number all along with the idea that um, that, will, that will improve the flow of traffic um, on the entire segment. So it's not just about, you know, at industrial drive. And and if this help it makes you helps you at all, DPW had no concerns for the um, application um, for the change here because of the changes that were already approved in the um, access points at this point. DPW doesn't sit on David Road between Route Nine and King Street at rush hour. I mean, I think it's a deep but one thought I'm having is we're not comparing, we're not, the question isn't, is this substantially more detrimental than the current vacant use? It's, is it, substan is it substantially more detrimental than perhaps a, a permitted as of right industrial use? Which is speculative. What does that mean? But well, it would be the previous nonconformity, which, which was the Ford, Ford dealership. Ford dealership. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also say that um, you, when you're thinking about your traffic situation on Damon Road, it's about the entire street. It's not about this. Um, and the whole point of reconstructing Damon Road is to address the entire segment and also deal with the Route 9 crossing over the bridge, the Coolidge Bridge, and all of that. The idea is to create better flow patterns, even coming from Amherst and getting people through and around. So that's the whole reason why the state is rebuilding Damien Road. One of the issues, and I know this is not anything we have control over because it's the state, not us, but you know, it's the turn on industrial by the tracks and the delay in that light. I mean, it got better, you know, from the initial light, but it's still a lot of backup because, especially coming in that direction that we've been talking about, because they want to make sure there's nobody anywhere near the tracks when there's a red light. So, you know, there's a there's a cut off of the number of cars between King Street and the tracks. Um, which backs it up. So I don't know how that's going to be addressed, but if that continues, you know, with that cutoff and the inability to move beyond those lights, and there's only still going to be two lanes and there's an increase in the left turns, that's, it's going to clog it more. What, what I think is that <clears throat> you have a, you're going to create a situation here where people who are contractors and that will be able to come through the where they're going to get their goods and things. They'll be able to come to a restaurant there rather than going into town. I think it'll lighten the impact on, of the traffic in the neighborhood. People aren't going to be going to the restaurant who are coming from Amherst. That traffic is already dedicated to, to going onto Bridge Road and out to Route 9. This is going to create uh, an opportunity for people to have lunch at this place rather than driving downtown to, to have lunch or down King Street to eat at McDonald's or, or Taco Bell or something like that. 
it's a it's another um, um, facility that's going to serve the community well. I think. Right, but we're not really focusing now on traffic or traffic reduction anywhere else in town. It's, the question is the traffic increase on this already burdened right. road. And, that, and the other thing to think about too is sort of coupling this with the other improvements that were made under when you approved the Dr. Nomad's drive through. So, um, it, so they made substantial changes to that site was it enough to sort of also capture the other uses on the site, including this 1,100 square foot you know, burrito place? Um, and, um, you know, I think um, making those driveway, restricting the access points um, restricts all the flow to that site. And um, I think. You know, the morning peak is probably going to be worse for Dunkin' Donuts, and and so I think if you were going in that in the other direction during the morning, maybe you would have that same concern about Dunkin' Donuts. Um, but I think from the city's perspective, we certainly felt that the changes that were made a year ago in the plan, in the design plans, would address those conflicts um, on the network. I wouldn't be as concerned in the morning because it's a right turn. You know, that, that make, that's a huge difference, I think, um, than left turn and block, you know, to do that left. Um, maybe maybe the traffic signals will be better. Um, now there's, there's I don't know if there's a dedicated left arrow there. Um, there might be for a very short time. I think it's a little, actually it's a little bit long because what the, the vehicle's taking that left they're, up and they're going big north and west on, on Damon Road or 9 going into the industrial park. Those are big trucks or trails. Yeah, you get one or two trucks and that's it. Yeah. To give you a little bit of an analogy, only by way of experience, I, I um, this is kind of analogous, but on a much smaller scale than West Springfield. Um, I represented Raymore and Flanagan on Riverdale Road at the Riverdale shops. And everyone knows that they put up a 70,000 square foot um, Raymore Flanagan furniture store on what used to be Showcase Cinemas on the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we rezoned it and we put that store in there and then the, the traffic flow in and out of Riverdale shops is worse than the level F. I mean, we had all traffic studies done left and right all day long. They have huge problems with lights and signalization and getting people out because of all the people going to the Home Depot in the back, and Costco and Table and Vine, huge issues. We came back two more times um, and put it in the Olive Garden and in all these on the same pad, the same parcel. And it was already at a dysfunctioning level. Um, and we had these same type of issues like, well, isn't another little restaurant like the Olive Garden or a big restaurant like, or the Aldi's gonna generate much more problems? The answer was no. At the end of the day, it already is function at the level it functions at. The people that are gonna go there still go there. Um, and it didn't change. It's been in operation now for probably seven or eight or nine years. And it functions just as well, whether it was there or not. Um, this is almost the same analogous type of argument in the sense that Dunkin' Donuts is going to generate the traffic, it's going to generate the marketing doctor is going to get it. Um, this 1,100 square foot burrito place is going to ge generate some increase around the lunch hour, hopefully. Um, but it's going to add to the character of the neighborhood. It's not going to be substantially more detrimental, and that's kind of the standard. And it's kind of going to enhance that whole idea of this kind of being a little general business area. Um, and, and Damon Road is going to be substantially improved. Um, so I don't think. And, and we tested the waters now for a year, and this is the uh, this is the two two tents that we were able to, to capture for that particular area. So um, I don't think it's going to really create a way more detrimental problem to the area. I think it's going to enhance the look of the of the little type of two buildings that we have on site, and I think they're going to pull a little bit of business away. You know, the idea is to get some of the business from the Dunkin' Donuts for those who stop at the lunch hour, get a coffee and a sandwich type of thing, and on, on, on they go. Um, it won't have any impact in the morning, which is, I think is a big plus, to be perfectly honest with you. That's a huge plus to have this business generate no no, uh, no business at all in the morning, so to speak. And the off-peak hours, they don't generate a ton of business either. So um, that's just my, my two cents from prior experience. 
Is there anyone else here who, who is here to ask or comment about this application? Seeing nobody. Um, Yeah, I think we understand what the issues are. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this is going to be open from, from the Carolyn, uh, Carolyn, you mentioned crosswalks. Um, can you remind us about what the planning board requested as a condition in terms of crosswalk? Does that mean there's going to be a sidewalk built there's, in from where to where? There's a sidewalk wrapping the entire parcel. Um, Sure Where does it begin and end in terms of the, like, does it go to River Run? Um, so that part is, yeah. is part of the Damon Road reconstruction. Yeah, There's going to be a crosswalk at the Damon Road, road. Yeah. I mean, at the it's River Run. With the radio cycle, the industrial way. Yeah. And um, there was, I have to go back and look at the plans. There was a debate, there was, the sidewalk was originally going to be on the opposite side of Damon Road. I think they pulled it down the other side. Right, that's what I mean. But for this parcel, the middle sidewalk will run all the way past the entrance drive on Industrial Drive and keep keep going. Mr. Sardin has put, I think, 400 feet of sidewalk on on industrial as part of his approval. Yeah. Right. So, um, uh, but part of the crosswalks are part of the Dan Road reconstruction. So this applicant isn't building the crosswalks across the road. They're building sidewalks on their parcel and beyond. Down the yeah. Correct. And these hours are 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Correct. 13 hours. So if there are no more questions uh, from the board or from the public, I guess we can uh, a motion to close the public hearing and then we'll continue our, our discussion, but we won't be able to have any more input from the applicant. Or, so and I assume there's no other uh, in, uh, comments or... Well, the only other comment is if there's anything more that we can do, um, it, we'd be happy to provide any information, but Mr. Sardin has spent significant dollars on this project already. He's, he's put ton of effort into to make this a really nice um, spot and, and to improve the area. So but if there was any additional information, I would want you to vote without giving us the opportunity to provide any information that you could possibly think of, but I can't think of any right now, but that would be my only comment. Well, for me, it comes down to the, um, the difference between the retail that has already been permitted mm -hmm. and um, well, we can. No. I suppose we can have a conversation without closing it. So, if we did need more information, yeah. Um, so we have. Uh, there's an 1,100 square foot retail location that. Uh, what sort of? I'm not seeing a big difference between a retail, um, say. Retail use that would be permitted that we wouldn't see. Ian Taylor, the hair salon, the hair salon, uh, barber shop. That um, can generate all kinds of. You know, it's it's, it's true that uh, you know if the burrito place is doing really well, they probably have a little more traffic than a, than a hair salon, for example. Um, but I'm not uh, given the given the site plans and how much it's been. Um, it's worked, it doesn't seem like a big difference to me. Well, I think what we had originally understood was that it was not going to be retail by office. Mm -hmm. So this is a shift from office to retail, yeah, including no idea. restaurants. No idea. Good point. Good point. Not that so I... So it isn't res retail... That, that reflects on my concerns or not, but I think, think that... that restaurant is retail. No. So going from office, say it's a... Uh, lawyer's office or uh, uh, the marketing would be called an office that's not called retail uh, but it's I'm not seeing a big difference that would affect you know, my, my gut feeling is that Damon Road is a disaster <laughs> any of us who've been stuck on any given 
afternoon rush hour. I, I just avoid it, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. I, I try to avoid Dan and Bro. But, but I'm not, I'm sort, of, I'm sort of agreeing, I suppose, with Sarah. I'm not sure that an 1,100 foot specialty restaurant makes the situa situation, subs remember the word substantially is in there, substantially more detrimental. Um, and, uh, and it's encouraging to know that there are plans to improve Damon Road dramatically, if not substantially change this intersection. But I also think, I also recognize we have to deal with the situation we have now, not what may or may not happen in the future, although Carolyn is saying it will happen. And I do have faith in the traffic wizards. I, I believe in them. Yeah, but, the engineering, uh, it's the funding that's the that's a big question. Yeah, well, so it may or may not happen. We have to deal with what we have now. Right. Um, but, but I think I'm sort of coming down on the side of, uh, I'm not convinced that this, this really small restaurant it's, space, well, takeout space, is going to be substantially more detrimental to what is already a problematic road. This can see 44 people, right? That's what your plan says here. I believe so, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of cars. And presumably, you're going to try to work to fill all those seats. You know, you're not going to have a business that you're just going to say, "Oh, gee, we're going to have a few people here and there." And that's it. You've obviously done well enough in your other businesses that you've had enough people and enough business that you've been able now to go out and try to do yet another one. But they did indicate it's primarily a takeout business. But this room for 44 people. Yes. And so I would I would have to assume that that's the hope that you would get 44 people in there at a time. Or even that there would be people waiting. Well, we could take, we could easily take tables out if that would, if there's any, any indication. I think that, that they lay out the tables there because that's all the space they really need. It's a counter space, it's a burrito. You get a burrito and, and you're either moving on or sit down to eat it. But if you want 22 people to sit there, yeah, I'm sure you have no problem with right. the number of tables. Bob, yeah. If you go into, say, McDonald's, there are other seats for 100 people. Correct. But there are never 100 people in McDonald's. I mean, you have. Uh, you have a space that has room for 44 seats. I mean, the size of the building will accommodate 44 seats plus all of the, uh, the kitchen. kitchen and large bathrooms and everything. They're using the space, not we could get 44 people. Right, 44 seats is, right 11, is only right. 11 you're looking, foursomes, you're looking four at, tops. You're looking seat. at right here. you got 50 seats right behind me. Right, uh, uh, 44 seats well, is... Well, we're it, talking about the corresponding number of cars. cars. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, but 11, again, 11 four tops. Uh, I'm just doing yeah. the math. I don't know the exact yeah. configuration. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah, the hope is one. to fill the seats, and, and right. that's... Okay. It, it can, it, you can have a kid right. party and they could fill the 100 seats of McDonald's. Right. Right. So I, I think you have to, when we're considering this, and I'm not here, guys, but when we're considering this, I think we have to look at what the potential is here and, and what the hope would be on the part of the business yeah. in terms the of filling it up. So I mean, if you've got 44 people sitting and then you've got more people taking out, that's even more cars. The business is going to keep cars off the Cars aren't going to be going using this place as a destination. There are going to be people coming from the industrial park to have lunch. The people from that neighborhood can come across the industrial park and Jonathan Wrights or someplace to have lunch. Or They're tapping existing traffic. They're not creating more. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, I, I don't know any, but any of us can actually see. Yeah, I mean, I, mean it, I understand you guys are saying that you don't think that it's going to really generate that much more. It's not substantial or detrimental. That's fine. I mean, I think we're just going to have to. Yeah, and, and it says a, a, a unanimous vote is not required no, for a fine. Yeah. Well, I would also, um, if this was a plan, what the plan we haven't seen for the other tenant, the marketing doctor, might have 50 cubicles in there. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a large. Yes, yeah, more than half large space. space. <laughs> Um, you know, we got this much space. Right, and they're hoping to expand into that second space. Or if it became a fitness center, you'd have 200 rolling machines. How many, what's the square footage of the uh, marketing doctor? 
32. So it's, it's three times what three times, so that's correct. Yeah. So um, if this was proposed for office, um, I would assume a density of, of at least that many chairs for if it was an office space. You might have that same number of cars coming to the going. It's a size. Yes, I'm, I, I don't know. Been I, no mean, I mean, on a square been foot space. Really. If, if this one space was presented as an office, that floor plan might be it would be a similar density to this. Right, hold on. Yeah, okay. I, I think so. Yeah, we, 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 we can. Okay. Every decision does not have to be unanimous. Right. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead. Uh, unless you want to talk about, it's sort of been alluded to, limiting the number of tables. But, uh, I think that would be hard to enforce. Okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess if we have all information, what should we move to close the public hearing? So moved. All in favor, second, all in favor, unanimous. And then a motion on the application for the finding. I move that we approve the finding, um, commercial finding, amendment to New England Pads Franchise Investment Partners to expand non conforming use to add a restaurant at 55 Damon Road, mapping 18D26. Second before the session. We've said what needs to okay, be said. Okay, but a second, just a second on the motion. Do you want to second the motion? No, really. Can I second, second the motion? Of course. Um, no, I think you should. You're just seconding the motion, so it's on the floor to vote on the motion. Is it okay with you that we vote on it? <laughs> um, I, I would just point out that, that DPW has not raised any concerns at all. And I'm sure they get plenty of complaints about Damon Road. Um, and that I think Damon Road is problematic whether or not this happens. And I'm not convinced that it, the effect will be substantially more detrimental. And I think it will also be a, an improvement, at least aesthetically, to, the, to that uh, stretch of Damon Road. Um, and uh, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Did we close the hearing? Uh, yeah. We yeah. closed the public hearing. So uh, any other? I'd like, I'd yeah. like to also sure, point please. out that I agree with David that Damon Road is one of the most problematic stretches in the city. And I'm eager to see how the city and the state improves Damon Road. But we're fighting a battle here that is based a bit on patterns and inertia, which is that a stretch that connects two ramps of an interstate are likely to be the places where these kind of where these kind of businesses succeed. And we've got some empty spaces on King Street, but King Street is not where people go in and out of to get on and off the interstate. So I'd rather recognize that that stretch of Daniel Road could be better used and used in a way that's more intuitive for travelers and this to me seems like we're going in that direction and then i think that what maureen just said really bolsters my position that this is substantially more detrimental because if it's going to be a place that there's going to be heavy traffic because of the location it's going to increase the traffic in a place that i don't you know again it's really unclear what the supposed fix is going to be for damon road but i think in both directions at the time of day, especially. I mean, this is 13 hours we're talking about, but even in the um, rush hours, uh, in both directions, I think there are serious problems and this will compound them. So. I'd like to say that yeah. I think that it will have no impact on traffic there. I mean, yeah, that's up to the community. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a crystal ball thing. Yeah. If we could find that it's lighter than expected, we could find that it's heavier than expected. That is certainly a risk. And so all the motion was to approve the findings. So those in favor, that's two. Opposed, that's one. So the, the motion uh, carries. Um, thank you. 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 Thank you.
you. And we'll now move to the second and last item on the agenda. Uh, thank you for your patience. It's an application for a commercial finding or Hampton Area Pediatrics parking lot expansion at 193 Locust Street, Florence, map by 23 b 11 And your name and address. Hi, I'm Terry Reynolds, Reynolds Engineering, uh, local in town here. Uh, I just thought I'd bring this up because that's great. Thank you. Um, so uh, the only the only question is we have the members of the public have to be able to see it. So, sir, if you want to either relocate or have questions or want to look at this, you're you're welcome to. Sure. Uh, well, you, oh, only if you want to. I just it's just. I would love to. Yes. Oh, okay. Certainly. Um, okay. Do well, you want me to reposition myself? Uh, do we already have this? If we have we it, you can put it in a position that everybody can see. Uh, sure. we, I'm the only one here. Sure. Okay. What, what number is this one that you're looking at? Uh, let's take five to lay out plan. Five of nine? Yes. So what I'm here for is we're asking for the finding for non-conforming use, the change in non-conforming use, basically. Um, so currently, Northampton area, um, why don't you start with the existing conditions plan, which is page two? Two of them. I've got that one here, Elizabeth. Okay. If you want to share this one with me. Okay. Um, and so what we're looking at is currently we have a non-conforming use for the parking lot actually in the right of way. Right. Um, and you mean the street layout for Locust Street? In yeah. the street layout. And typically the parking's required to be, I believe it's 10 feet back, right? Um, so the whole frontage, all sure. this parking is not conforming. Okay. Um, and so what's being proposed, if you look at the layout, is to pull it back to the property line. Uh, okay. Uh, there are two additional spaces that are being proposed, um, but it's all going to be pulled back, so it won't be. So you're and reducing that reducing the non conformity. Okay. In the front. Oh, yeah. In the front. Okay. Yep. And so then there's yeah. an addition. This has nothing to do with what you're asking us to no. do, right? Okay. No. Yeah. no it's, it's just, really just, it's just the, the parking. It's just the and parking. And the buffer. So they're also adding tree um, landscaping in the front, which are trees were required one per 30 feet of frontage. They're not coming all the way to one per 30 feet, um, but they're adding four, I believe, four trees. Can you show us and where on there, there the this? trees? The will trees be are on the planting plan, which is number seven. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, I got it. Okay. So I believe it would be two per side. I wasn't part of that discussion, so I'm not sure how it went to the uh, With who? In, in Bone. Oh, um. Yeah, so I uh, know just in terms of um, trees along the front um, buffer, they can certainly go in the right of way, um, but they're, they're, I think a total of four are required, um, and they're um, three being proposed. So um, the reason for that is site distance. There's a site distance issue coming out of the site looking down Locust Street, the mm -hmm. sight line. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's difficult because it's a slope. Uh, it's a grade. Yeah, yeah, and the road curves a little bit. Yeah. And the um, cars are going six Right. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> You've been spying on me? <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been so, taking my kid in and out of this driveway. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody in this town has seen that. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's kids, anyways. Um, but so it's been an issue just simply with the shrubs. And so the, that's, that's why we're trying to keep the trees back and okay. just limited area mm -hmm. so so but you're increasing this span right you're yeah the, the project is to increase their parking so this goes right up to their that building of that small it gets very close uh, yes small yeah. like lawns right. or repair place dropping right. off or, yeah. and feet. so that you can create these parking spots as right, well. Right, looking to create a And there's spaces. a bit of a grade change there. Right. And what's happening back here so that you're getting more spots? It's, it's just striping reconfiguration. Oh. Yeah. So. And this one is going to the planning board as well? 
because of the addition or because of the, the is it because of the, the parking triggers okay because of the setback issues no just yeah. the number of parking spaces for me and anytime there's a new parking lot of more than six spaces it triggers site. so I, i'm confused and what are we looking at non-conformity for the front just the front back and the buffer so it's okay. just, just the front. front okay yeah thank you right. and the buffer being uh it refers to the fact that the plantings will not bring it into full compliance, but it, they will bring it into more into compliance right. than it presently. Right. So we're reducing the nonconformity in terms of the setback, setback right. although it's still zero line, lot line right. instead of 10 feet. Right. Right. But it reduces the existing nonconformity, and the planting plan also reduces the nonconformity. Exactly. Right. Um, and this is a, a also a fine thing. Okay. So um, is there anyone here from the public who wanted to comment or? or or ask about this, okay, just saying, no, saying nobody. Um, nothing else changes with lighting, and then of course planning board is doing a site plan approval only because right. of so the increase planning board is, it's, okay. it's also planning board and, and uh, conservation. Okay. So on the, on the tree planning, this is one of them? Yes. Right by the curb cut? Yes. So is that gonna be a problem with the site? No, no, that's, that's why it's, set in here rather than out here. Um, so there's, but as a car pulls up here, they, they have a good sight mark down and the road. Would it be possible to put one in here to make it totally conforming on this side? Um, or potentially, um, they, would, they would end up losing another space. Um, the, the intent is to do low low level landscaping across the front areas and try to minimize the amount of trees. So even the current plantings, <coughs> by the way, are, I think are beautiful. Um, but unless you're in an SUV, when you exit that parking lot, even those beautiful ornamental grasses, like yeah, they know. really block the. Well, field. that's part of the. Re so you're going to move that back. No, that's not getting back. It's getting lower. Because right now there are there's smoke bush about this tall, right. which is too tall. Yeah. There's the tall grasses, the same thing. And the trees you're suggesting, those two trees will be limbed up enough. Right, and there's and they're set back mm -hmm. enough too. Right. So so as you come out here, this one's not such a big deal because Locust Street goes essentially straight and if anything to the left. Mm -hmm. um, and you're looking your oncoming traffic is the far side rather than the close side. Uh, and so, so it's the left hand movement, exactly. left hand traffic that's more of a problem. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Uh, how, yeah, how many, how many um, parking spots would be lost just by putting a planting over here on the side? This one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, is there any reason not to bring this to even if we attempt to do that. No, if, if yeah, to have the fourth plane from that one, right? The fourth oh, one would fourth bring it into conformity? I guess I would just remind you, they're spending a huge amount of money just to gain 11 spots. So, okay. yeah. Okay. The city doesn't really feel any need for that. No, it's not, but. There's an opportunity um, looking at this area here, where it says to remain as, and there's, I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not clear about exactly where it is. There is a large here. tree in that, on that corner already, so right, right here. Oh, this yeah. little yeah. icon is, it looks like a shrub. That, that, that little, 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 yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, yeah. it has a quite big canopy, mm -hmm. actually. So that's kind it's of, it's going one less tree. Plus the space in the room. Right, and it may hard, it may be hard to, um, yeah. I mean, I think the um, the spacing between there may not be enough spacing and tree growth area to put another one there without. I mean, I suppose you hold it in the parking space. It is true. I mean, it could go into the right of way. Um, it is. Um, I mean, I would have to agree that. Um, uh, it, given the whole point of their project is to create more parking spaces than to the point one. Um, 
but um, I think for the right of way, I would just want to keep W take another look if you were going to suggest planting. Yeah. In that. No, that's okay, as long as they're all right with it. And these are tulip trees and elms. Um, well, the, the ones along the front are, you know, so they'll be a, a distinct trunk and then the things are up higher, at least as they grow. So I see a retaining wall along the property line or very close to it. Mm -hmm. And then towards the back, oh I see. I thought I thought you were expanding the parking back there in that area. No, you're no. not really changing that grading back there, you're just taking care of the stormwater. Right. Right. And you're doing some mitigation by doing some basis from the little back there. Mm -hmm. That's another concern, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, cotton's coming. Anything else? So I guess motion. If everyone's ready, motion to close the public hearing. So I second. All in favor. That's unanimous. That's unanimous. And then a uh, motion on the application. Do you want to do this one? Uh, motion to approve the um, application for parking lot expansion at 193 Locust Street on the staff of the 2015 11. As requested. And second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And then we do have, before we adjourn, a, a number of uh, minutes. Yeah. It looks like two of them, May 24th. And August, uh, July 12th, uh, and two on August 9th, two sets of minutes. Right, mm -hmm. Park Valley's a little bit that Oh, yeah, it probably is. Um, I think there was a question on one of the there you go. Uh, And Sarah noted to me that she was, in fact, present August 9th, so I changed that. Oh, yeah, that would have been my one. Scheduling, or we're back to two yeah, times. Back to well, I wanted to ask about that other other request regarding the exterior facade changes to the service center building on the agenda. Oh, that's the that's, planning that's planning board. Thank you. I think that's under the line yeah, yeah, yeah. for planning well, board. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I guess motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So you have something for two weeks from now, or is it two weeks from now? Right? Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. No. Oh, okay. There's nothing for the 27th. Let me just double check. I just didn't know that. That's definitely that, right? Uh, let me just double check.
think it was just, um, there was something that came in. It would be good if there was nothing I was asked to do a talk. But I said, I'd love to hear your talk. I, I, um, I don't think we have anything for the 11th. Um, but I need to confirm tomorrow. You let us know tomorrow. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. And, and yeah, we already yeah, know we have nothing fun. for two weeks from now. Right. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. Good. Thank you. We adjourned, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.